I think this will be the final video on the Octagon. It's more or less done. Um, the power amp has been repaired. I've got a new speaker on the keyboard half. Um, the drone problem of the keyboard has been pretty much solved. There's still a couple of keys that I need to do the final adjustments of the spring tension on to get them to work. One or two are temperamental, one or two are just not playing at all. All the contacts and the actual signal outputs are working um, because if I remove the board and actually push the contact with my finger I get signal. So I've got um, output from all keys in that respect but it's just the spring tension in some of the keys themselves that I have to adjust. Um, there's a bit more cleaning and adjustment to do on the keyboard and chord half and um, a little bit of tweaking of the uh, output vol uh, volumes on the preamps I think to get the balance between the keyboard and the chord half um, a, a little better. It seems best at the moment when the balance is mostly over to the right hand side so I'd like to get the balance control central and adjust them probably on the preamp. Um, the speakers are of course un unmatched um, that are in the bottom at the moment. I do have a matching set of speakers that I may uh, try in there to see if it sorts some of the sensitivity issue out. But yeah, it's essentially uh, all working. I'd like to give a big thanks to Dick Wright from idlevalley.co.uk who's a local musician and a vintage Hammond enthusiast um, who helped me out a great deal with the um, transistor selection for the uh, power amp. Uh, I ended up using um, MJE243 and 253 output drivers and Dick helped me out with um, the pinouts on them. On my first sort of forays into trying to reverse engineer the power amp I convinced myself that uh, the center pins on both output drivers were the, the emitter. Um, I've never found uh, a transistor package, an output transistor package anyway in that, in that format uh, that had the emitter in the middle. So it was a bit confusing until uh, we went over some of the circuit. He actually showed me that uh, on the transistor's data sheet, if I have it up on my phone here, there is a marking that shows um, the back of the transistor is marked as pin 4 and that always matches up to the collector because it's the, the heat sink the collectors where most of the heat um, on that kind of transistor will, will build um, so we managed to pull one of the good transistors back on the uh, working half of the preamp of the power amp sorry and measure the continuity and we figured out that the central pin is actually um, the collector not the emitter so the new chips luckily did drop straight in um, I think the sensitivity issue is probably more down to the mismatched speakers I mentioned in a previous video um, that I basically reversed engineered uh, the preamp and I didn't show my notes for it so it's just a very quick shot and all I was trying to do was trace the inputs and outputs of the op amps and just the signal flow and what went to each pin um, on the edge of the, the circuit card so I could trace through the wiring what went back and forth between the uh, the power supply and the, the power amp really and from that I was able to ascertain that the first um, op amp in the chain um, had a faulty output on one side and it was kicking out DC which had gone through the rest of the uh, preamp and into the power amp and blown up the, the keyboard half of the amp so um, all in all it's had three op amps changed on the uh, preamp, one op amp change on the power amp, about five capacitors, bridge rectifier, um, new output transistors on uh, the keyboard half, um, loads of cleaning, loads of adjustment. I managed to bend the keyboard springs back by removing the spring assembly and basically um, pressing it against the frame of a door <laughs> to try and get them uh, to even out and then just manually trying to push them up and down to get them about even then I refitted the keyboard although it's kind of reassembled it's not complete uh, most of the screws are still out the keyboard circuit board isn't completely screwed down uh, at the moment so there's still a bit more to do but we thought we'd just tidy it up a little bit and, uh, and give it a try <laughs> So 
there we have it. I, I can't wait to get more discs to try this out. Uh, I think we're going to do a little recording, uh, maybe a little sampling with this, definitely with some of the beats and rhythms. Um, and then hopefully get to do uh, a little bit more uh, final adjustment with it. So hope it's been um, hope it's been fun to watch. Um, it's been fun to keep just a little diary of uh, where I am with it, and uh, hope it's not been too rambly. So thanks for watching.